Welcome back to another episode of Into the Airbnb, where we talk with Airbnb hosts about their short-term rental experience. Our guest for today is Crystal Cosi, based in Los Angeles, California. In this episode, Crystal will share with us about her journey and experience as an Airbnb host, some useful insights of her area, and how it is like to manage in a popular neighborhood like Eagle Rock. This episode is sponsored by Airbnb the only one analytics dashboard for short-term rental investors and managers, where you can find precise Airbnb data such as occupancy rate, revenue, average daily rate, and so on. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Can you tell me how did you get started on Airbnb? Sure. Um, so, I got started on Airbnb in 2013. I was working as a promotional model traveling all around the United States. Um, and I felt that it would end like producing festivals and and that kind of thing. I run a circus company. So, I was traveling a lot, working as, you know, as my circus company and as a promotional model. So I felt, you know, that it would be beneficial for me to rent my apartment while I was, you know, not there. So I, you know, just took photos on my phone and listed my apartment on Airbnb when I was producing a festival in Utah. Oh, and how was your experience with renting your own apartment, especially while you're not there? Because usually when people rent their own place, they living in, I don't know, another room or either really close to their home. And how so was your experience with that? So basically my apartment's a one bedroom. Um, I've always rented it, you know, as the whole place to, for them. So I've never stayed there with other when the guests are there, I just give it up and I either stay with friends or family, or like I said, I'm traveling for work. Um, so I, I personally like would not feel comfortable air being, being a room, um, and being at the place, um, because I personally like my privacy and I feel that, you know, Airbnb guests enjoy their privacy also, but I know a lot of Airbnb get, or a lot of Airbnb hosts do rent out a room in their home or apartment, but I just never felt comfortable doing it that way. And my my apartment just didn't have the room for that. So, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I wasn't there. So for me, I put it on Airbnb because I wanted it to be occupied while I was gone and I just wanted to make extra money. Um, did you receive good guests or bad guests during that? Um, my first guest was actually a really good guest. Um, but I, you know, I just listed my apartment the way that it was. And it definitely, you know, in 2013, it definitely was not Airbnb ready. And um, she and I, I accidentally accepted the deposit over Wells Fargo so that you know that got me kicked off the platform I had no idea for a year that I was even like that my account was suspended for taking the money through the deposit through Wells Fargo um so you know I made a lot of rookie mistakes and she actually like canceled her reservation because like I said the apartment was not Airbnb ready it had carpet it it was cluttered with a lot of furniture. I just did it as like, you know, a last minute thing because I got booked for the festival and I felt that, you know, it would have been smart for me to sublet it. So um, basically that's, you know, um, was my first experience with Airbnb. But then um, as I was traveling, I was like wondering why I wasn't getting more bookings. And so eventually I called Airbnb and they let me know what happened. And um, so I created a new listing. I tore the carpet out of my apartment. Luckily there was hardwood floors underneath. I listed a bunch of the furniture on free Craigslist and people came and got the, the excess furniture out of my apartment. 
And um, then I listed my apartment once I got it refigured and Airbnb ready um, under a new account. And the Airbnb um, photographer came and took photos. And then I have had an amazing experience ever since. Um, I've only had a couple of um, bad guests throughout the years but most like 99% of my guests have been you know really great I don't have instant book on or anything like that so I really use my gut when I book guests um does that answer your question yes any particular background um check you run on them no, I like I said, I use my gut when I am mm -hmm. booking uh, clients. So, you know, normally it's like an immediate yes or no for me. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I don't I don't require um, the guests to give me any additional information, you know, because I know that Airbnb does do their own like ID verifications. Mm hmm. So, but yeah, if I feel that anything is off, then I just don't accept that booking. Okay, yeah, sounds good. And uh, with the listing you're currently uh, renting out, which is not your apartment, um, what kind of, uh, what demographic of guests do you usually get in that? So it's basically the same demographic as I would get with my apartment, um, but the, the other listing I created, I created um, in September of 2021. Um, so it's a fairly new um, unit and my friend owns the building and the unit became available. So then I decided to, you know, put the money into creating it, making it an Airbnb. It's a studio. Um, the only differences between it is the size between my apartment and, and the studio is the size. Obviously, like my apartment um, is 800 square feet and the studio is 200 square feet. Um, other things that are beneficial about the studio versus my apartment is that the studio is on the first floor. Um, so there's no steps or anything like that. So it can definitely accommodate like older people or anyone, you know, with disability a lot easier as my apartment was, is on the second story. Um, and the studio comes with a parking spot, a designated parking spot. Um, and the building is a secured building. Um, whereas my apartment is not a secured building. Oh, so it is open to a lot more people than the other listing. Um, I mean, it that though that really like my demographic is mostly like production people because I live really close to a lot of the studios and that's a lot of the demographic that I get. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people that work in TV and film, basically. Um, but I do get people that, you know, work and go to college as well. I live in a small college town and there is colleges in Pasadena as well. Um, Eagle Rock is between Pasadena and Glendale. So I get a lot of like college students and production people, film people um entertainers because I'm an entertainer myself like I said I run a circus company so I have attracted other circus um performers and people in the circus industry as well but I have just attracted like you know um parents visiting their children and grandparents and you know all different types of people mm -hmm, I see that's good um, a lot of you... foreigners. Sorry? A lot of foreigners. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of people trying to move to LA, stay at my place, that are like looking for a place to live in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's a popular neighborhood there? 
Yeah, I have a po- I live in a popular neighborhood. Um, there's no off season. I I'm booked all the time. Oh. LA is like that. Los Angeles mm-hmm. is typically like that. I mean, it's not seasonal here. I mean, most people that have Airbnbs are booked most of the time. That's great. I was about to ask you about the seasonality in, like, in your area. So it's great you already answered that. And what about your average occupancy rate during all the year then? I'm at about 80 to 90 occupancy rate um, for the Dragonfly, the studio. Mm-hmm. That's great. That, those are really good numbers. And is it easy to get? I, I don't know. I don't really know about any laws in the, in the city of LA. Is it easy to get to do Airbnb there? So, um, no, it isn't easy. Um, basically, like, I don't do short term. I do 30 plus days for the studio. Um, I, before the law, the bylaws were passed in November of 2019, I did do short term with my apartment. But when, um, when the bylaws passed, um, my apartment was no longer um, qualified for to be on Airbnb um, because it's a rent controlled building. So there are like certain bylaw clauses that um, basically um, you have to abide by and qualify for to be an Airbnb listing. Um, but one, one way you can, um, you know, bypass going to the city and getting the permit is having a 30 plus day listing, which I currently have right now for the Dragonfly Studio um, until the zoning of my building is rectified with the city and then I can turn it to an STR. But um, with 30 day bookings, I've been still pretty booked out. So like I said, Los Angeles, it's not, um, you know, it doesn't make much of a difference Mm -hmm. because everyone's trying to come here all the time. So. I see. So it's a good market then since um, you're you're telling me you're pretty occupied there all the time. Is it a competitive market? Um. It is. Yeah, it is a competitive market. Um, There are definitely less Airbnbs um, since the bylaws went into effect than Mm -hmm. there were before. Um, And the occupancy rates and charges have been higher since Mm -hmm. those bylaws were passed. So, um, but yeah, if a guest books anything past 31 days, then they bypass those occupancy fees. So, um, but yeah, LA does charge um, a large fee for the occupancy rates. I see, I see. And um, throughout the year, how is, what is, sorry, your pricing strategy? Um, I basically like see what is around me in, for 30 plus days and see the pricing and then I price it, you know, competitively Mm -hmm. with my offering, with what I'm offering. So with the studio, I offer weekly uh, changeovers. So the guest has clean sheets, clean towels, um, and the apartment is cleaned once a week um, while they stay and like I said, it does have its own parking spot, which, you know, is a big deal in Los Angeles because parking can be challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so I, I try to go above and beyond. And um, how do you how do you usually like your guests react to the cleaning once a week, do they, can they also um, not accept it? Do they usually accept it? Yeah, um, I've had, most guests want that, you know, because the for the studio, there isn't a washer and dryer on the property. It's, it's, there is a laundry mat about, a, you know, like 500 feet away up, up the block. 
Um, but they definitely, they typically want their sheets and towels changed out. Um, but if I am unable to do the changeovers every week, then I just give them different sheets and towels um, and linens and bedding and everything um, that I don't mind getting thrashed if I'm unable to do the changeovers. But I typically, they typically want me to come and do the changeovers. I do them while they're working. So when they're not in the unit, um, and it just, you know, prolongs the quality of the bedding and the towels in general. Yeah, that's right. And do you, are you the person who usually makes the changes or do you hire a cleaning person sometimes? So I do have a maid and I do hire her um, if I'm not available, but um, to, you know, optimize money, I try to do as much as I can on my own because my profit is about $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So if I had to hire the maid, um, you know, every week, then that would be cut into, you know, how much I would receive. But if I'm not available to do the changeover, then yes, I have the maid come. And I, I typically have the maid come at the end of the booking, once the guest checks out to do the changeover. Oh, to do the, like the whole listing cleaning? I mean, I do clean it like intensely when the, when the guests are there, but yeah, like I do hire the maid if I'm not available to do the, the changeover cleaning at the end. Mm -hmm. I understand. Any particular uh, tips you'd like to share for other Airbnb hosts related to um, the area you're hosting maybe? Um, I would just say that, you know, with Airbnb, it's really important to know all of the city um, municipal codes, what mm -hmm. you need to do to get, be on Airbnb if you're willing to um, have your listing be 30 plus days, um, you know, in Los Angeles, you can still be successful being a 30 day plus listing, but if you um, are willing to jump through all the hoops of going to the city and planning and getting, you know, your permit for STR and working with your community and your neighbors. You want your neighbors to be, um, you know, like glad and happy about what you're doing. Um, if, you know, that you're Airbnb, you don't want a neighbor that doesn't like it um, because that could create problems for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, personally, like in my listings, I create an atmosphere that's like calming, rejuvenating, relaxing. Um, you know, in my listing, I talk about like, you know, the party is out in the world, not in the unit. Um, it's a place to come back and rest, work, sleep, that kind of thing. So just being completely, I'm very detailed in my listings. So as much detail as you can be um, in the listing will save you from having guests be upset or, you know, saying that you misled them in any way because you can say, no, that's all was detailed in the listing. So yeah, just knowing all the Airbnb um, rules, because mm -hmm. I made that mistake, like I said, in the beginning, I didn't know all the rules like not accepting money off the platform mm -hmm. um, yeah so just knowing all the rules uh, making sure that your guests get travel insurance suggesting travel insurance for your guests um, making you know personally I don't use instabook because like I said I use my gut um, when booking right. so I mean that's the advice I give in you know the Airbnb groups is to use your gut when booking guys. right great so uh thank you for your tips those have been really helpful and that would be it for today thank you for your time you're welcome thank you for having me thanks for listening to into the airbnb we're looking for hosts and other people in the short-term rental industry to interview 
If you have what we need and would like to share your experience in this podcast, please send us an email. All the info is at the end of the description.